You enter ground squirrels hibernate nine months of the year on average. They just have three months to basically fatten up. They really have to pile up the pounds uh, when they're above ground. They're not a species of concern in any way. They're doing extremely well. You can find them everywhere. So you can really reach large sample sizes very easily. And what we learn from this particular species can then be applied to other species that are also hibernators, but that are not doing so well in this part of the world. Hibernators, I would say, are amongst the most sensitive species around the globe when it comes to changes in climate. Global warming is mostly generated by us, whether we like it or not. If we don't understand the impact that we're having on our ecosystems, then we'll never be able to predict what will happen in the future. You know, what will we be left with? We use peanut butter and rolled oats so they can smell those little bundles of food. I'm looking for burrows so that I can set my traps. We try to put the traps just a few centimeters away. And I try to select the burrows that have signs of activity. So if I see some feces there, fresh from the morning, lets me know that there's a squirrel in there. The state of Utah in general has seen warming over the past century. Looking at the impacts of climate change requires long-term data collection. I can't really conclude on the long-term consequences, but I found some historical data from 50 years ago. There was a number of scientists from Utah State University in the 60s and 70s who worked on three different populations of Uinta ground squirrels, and they collected all kinds of useful information. So for me, it was kind of a gold mine. Because I have historical data from 50 years ago, I can draw a comparison and see how things have changed for these Uinta ground squirrels in light of the warming that we've seen over the past 50 years. We are comparing between historical data and contemporary data their body mass throughout the growing season. 395. Cool, and also survival and reproduction. To estimate survival, we use an approach called capture mark recapture. You mark every individual that you see, and then you come back to the field multiple times, and you keep track of who you are recapturing over time. The pit tag has a number associated to it, and each number is specific to a given individual. And then we inject underneath, and that's it. The three data points that we have collected on Uinta ground squirrels based on about 600 individuals seem to indicate that they're fatter today than they used to be 50 years ago. If they're fat for their size, that's probably correlated with a higher chance of surviving. And survival really drives the dynamics of the overall population. So when individuals survive better and longer, you see an increase in abundance. Now that seems like a benefit of climate change on this particular species, right? Climate change can affect certain species negatively. It can affect certain species positively. Uh, species interact, so it can affect, you know, the whole food chain in ways that are really hard to predict. We'll have more of Animal Rescue right after this brief break. In the connected world we live in, our personal information is everywhere. What happens if that information gets in the hands of criminals? Someone benefited from this. We were the ones on the hook for it. We can't pay a $50,000 bill. Cyber criminals around the world keep finding new ways to steal your personal information. And it could be right from your personal computer or smartphone. That's why LifeLock includes the power of Norton for even more protection for your identity and your devices where so much of your personal information lives. Knowing that Norton and LifeLock are on my side makes me feel even more confident about the protection that I have for my identity. Monitoring your credit isn't enough to see if your identity is being used by thieves. LifeLock helps you see more threats like your information